I think it's still technically morning, so I'll say good morning. <laughs> uh, uh, well, thank you for inviting me to Rice. It's always a pleasure to come back. Um, as David mentioned, I am an alumnus of Grand Valley and uh, was an active member of ASU. And uh, I'm not one of the original uh, founders of ASU, so I'm not that old. But just to give you a picture, graduated in 01. So some of you might have like, been playing with like Legos or Barbies or something like that. And I was up here nervously giving a speech for Rice as well. So, um, but again, thank you for uh, inviting me to the conference. Um, it's always a pleasure to come back. Uh, it feels like a second home to me in a lot of ways, uh, not only as a student, but I used to work here for a couple of years as well. So uh, Grand Valley always has a place in my heart as well as ASU. Um, I've been given the honor and privilege to um, share the words of Jason Alt, who was the original creator of Rice. And like David briefly mentioned, uh, Jason actually developed Rice as his master's project. So for his graduate work, this was his baby. And uh, he had planned it for a year and a half and introduced it to the students of ASU and basically laid out the groundwork for the conference. And as we all stared at him uh, nervously, as he talked about what he wanted to do with the conference and implementing it, uh, we decided, why not? So um, a lot of the topics that are introduced at the conference are near and dear to our hearts, as well as uh, prevalent issues um, going on within our lives, as well as us as a student, as well as in our personal lives. So um, it's great to see the transformation within the conference itself, as well as the Asian Student Union uh, throughout the years and throughout the years to come as well. So with that, I'm actually gonna share the words that Jason wanted to pass on to you, as well as a couple of words of my own. Why not us? Why not now? This is the rallying cry that a football team once had when they were trying to create and establish motivation before a big game. Why not us? Why not now? College campuses are not immune from the social diseases that the classifications that divide us more than they connect, that cause more suspicion than curiosity, that cause anger more than happiness. And in fact, college campuses can become havens and learning labs for future leaders of intolerance, hate, and discrimination, if we let it. 15 years ago, social media sites like Asian Avenue, convening student organizations like Ikasu and Masu, and spoken word groups like I was born with two tongues were prevalent in a movement to give the Asian American youth demographic a voice. A voice that was both tired and motivated. Tired of being invisible and motivated because when people actually did see us, they saw more caricature than person. Why not us? Why not now? Within small pockets, my friends and I talk about it. In the Office of Multicultural Affairs, we met up with our friends from the Black Student Union and the Latino Student Union and marveled at their collaboration and cohesiveness and ability to comprise a rational yet assertive voice of their respective community, speaking up and out about their frustrations and their hopes. We were just like so many of you students sitting in the audience. We were trying to figure it out. So why not us? Why not now? I can recall so many conversations with people who know so little about API experience, some were even Asian because history books in K through 12 did not talk about race and did not talk about ethnicity. In the context that we were living, home environments avoided such different topics as racism, sexism, and being an other. So in many cases, we were left to figure it out informally and on our own, and especially from a biased media that rarely featured us. Our invisibility in the spheres that generated the most dialogue sent the message whether intentional or not, that we did not matter, or we did not matter as much, and we internalized it. So why not us? Why not now? Rice was a two-year project. It was a product of so many ambitious, eager, and well-intentioned people from many backgrounds. When the small group of student leaders set out to format and create the details that guided the program today, we literally had no idea how we were going to pull it off. But as we pieced it together, and research the topics that interest, interest, interested us the most. From identity formation, to internalized oppression, to cultural commodified, to adoptee issues, to coalition building, 
with other historically underrepresented groups as we piece together the schedule, we process that what we were reading and what we were going to experience. We experienced a range of emotions and the dialogues that the planning team had every Wednesday night. At the development meeting, we were inspired and powerful for each of us in our own way. We were becoming voices in a community that never really had one at GBSU. We were becoming members of a community that we visually knew but did not understand. We were becoming our own Asian Americans. The power of rice was that it was never about the finish line. We figuratively ran this race because of the exercise of expanding our identities, our knowledge bases, our understanding of the obstacles and opportunities that faced our communities was passionately overwhelming and inspiring at the same time. When the inaugural rice event concluded, it seemed anticlimactic because it has already changed us for the better. 15 years later, and to know that it's still doing this, challenging young minds, making them stronger collaborators, researchers, educators, students, and activists is powerful. Rice is still accomplishing this simple outcomes a decade and a half later. The context of time cannot be glossed over here. A small company in LA called Black Lava formed about the same time that Rice was taking shape. Black Lava markets itself as a voicing in an Asian American agenda. Its clever slogans and phrases on its clothes include, I speak English, I'm not good at math, and other stereotype poking versions. One in particular has always stayed with me, a checkbox and the word other. When I was growing up on applications and such, under the heading race, you had the following choices, white, black, and other. It didn't even exist. I was not good enough for demographic upkeep and data reporting. I was invisible. So connecting it to the here and now, as instances like the SAE fraternity situation at the Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma, the hashtag Black Lives Matter movement, and the groundbreaking shows like Fresh Off the Boat, proves that in our societal landscape, race still matters, and still is a divisive subject. Rice gathers people on this relevant subject matter. The stigma did, did not scare you off. Instead, you came here to participate and contribute to change, social change. I applaud you for that. The checkbox is still there, but let's replace other with something. It matters not your background, color, identity, or preference. Do something. Rice implored it when it was founded 15 years ago, and through various iterations and models, it never faded from its message. So I repeat it today, at this meaningful 15-year anniversary, to not rest in your laurels, be intimidated by your ignorances, or be fearful of the ignorances of others. Opinions differ, but they need to be shared. Conversations must be had to press an agenda that confirms that we were not only arrived, but we do matter but that we are contributing to something even greater, testing our legacies and chasing our insecurities. We are, do, and represent something powerful. We represent ourselves. Keep fighting and motivating rights. You will always be. Um, so those are the words that Jay wanted to impart on you. Um, I hate points, so I'm gonna break out here. Okay. I hate microphones too. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, when I first met Jay back in 1998, dear God, all right, 1998, um, oddly enough, I was in uh, the field house and I was shooting hoops and he comes walking in with five other Asian guys and they're just staring at me. And I'm thinking, these guys are gonna jump me. Like, what, are they, what are they doing? So as I'm getting stared at, I'm walking around and finally Jason approaches me and says, you're a really tall Asian guy. And I'm like, all right, he's not gonna kick my ass. I was like, this is good. All right, and you know, I broke ground, said hello. And oddly enough, his first interaction with me was, I'd love for you to join ASU. And 
I just shot right back, no. Um, it was a little deterring for him, but the funny thing what Jay did that most other people wouldn't do when they recruit or find other people for a group is he brushed it off his shoulder. And he's like, well, I just want to get to know you. Okay. And I kept reverting back to his transition or his opening line, man, you're tall for an Asian. I'm like, what kind of salutary hello is that? You know, like, <laughs> what is he doing? Um, and I guess he was actually recruiting for a different purpose because oddly enough, he uh, was watching me play hoops and he wanted me to play on an Asian basketball team to face on Michigan State. So, and we won. So, um, oh. and I was, uh, I was astounded because as time went on, I still had a high school mentality. That was my first year at Grand Valley. Uh, Jay was in his last year. I'm not gonna say his fourth year because I'm sure he didn't want to show you, uh, share this with you, but he was in his fifth year, super seniors. And I still had a high school mentality. It's like, why is this upperclassman talking to me? Why does he want to get to know me? Why does he want to connect with me? And as time went on, I realized the classes of the upper class, the underclass, wherever it was, dissipates when you're an adult, when you're, when you're in college. And when you genuinely want to get to know somebody, when you really want to connect with someone, that all disappears. And the person just sees you for who you are. And even though his first initial observation was, this guy's tall, he went on to build that relationship with me. And oddly enough, as time went on, because I got to know Jay, and because I trusted him, and saw his vision, I did end up joining ASU the following year. And I went on to become a treasurer one year, was president of ASU the following year, and as time went on, um, I was more actively involved with the group. And I saw its purpose. And back in the day in 19, late 1990s and 2000s, the purpose of ASU was truly to give students a voice. And that is still prevalent even though your group is 10 times the size as it was when I was around. Uh, imagine my time around, there were eight members, okay? Um, but we needed to be heard. We needed to be listened to. And we had to stop the stereotype of being quiet or complacent or non-argumentative. Um, we had to raise our voice. So as the day goes on today, what I want you to think of for Rice and what you're going to get out of it is to make sure that you have a voice and that you express it and that you make sure you share it. And if you're the kind of person that tends to speak up readily, help someone find their voice. Okay? This is a safe space, always has been, and I want you to remember that as the day goes on because Rice goes beyond just Saturday, I think that today's the 21st. I almost had to look at the calendar. All right, today's the 21st. It goes beyond that. Okay. What you take out of rice will echo as time goes on. Okay, and you have to implement the words that you hear. And I want you to remind that to yourself because that goes on as a responsibility for you, not just as a student, but as a global citizen. Um, what we tend to forget sometimes is as we get bogged down in academics, if we're bogged down in our careers, or the alumni that are here, or for those students who also study and work, you have a social responsibility, and there are things that are going around the world that I know you're aware of, but how are you responding to that? Um, sometimes we listen to the news and we hear something and like, oh, that's so tragic. And I'm glad that doesn't happen in my neighborhood. Just wait, it definitely could. But if you're the proactive type, you can stop that, you can educate others, and you can make sure that they're informed. And you can also make sure that you're informed. That's sometimes what we forget in the college age. Um, unfortunately, what I've learned and experienced throughout time is uh, higher education has shifted. It's very business oriented. You know, you come in as a money spender and you leave out as a money maker. And we forget that college is not about just finding your career or making money. If you do, you wasted actually your time and your money. And what you have to remember is college is an experience. You have a harder job than even me because I work, but um, 
you have to go on with your daily lives. You don't have a set schedule besides your class schedule because you have to make room for study for, for those of you who work, make sure you have some social time. Sometimes you have too much social time and you need to narrow that down. Being a student is, is harder than a lot of other moments in your life. And you have to juggle that and balance that as well. But you can never forget that through all that juggling, through all that time, you are still a global citizen. We have a lot of issues that still are going on today from racism, sexism, gender inequality, to bias against uh, people with disabilities, to religious persecution. All these are prevalent today. And in your generation, it's even harder because now a lot of you identify with a lot of those different classes combined. So back in my day, it used to be about just race, um, just religion, just this. But now you run into someone who has to deal with the biases of being uh, an Asian American lesbian who's atheist and has some kind of disability. And just imagine what that person has to go through. But I don't want you to sit there and be reactive to that. I want you to be a visionary to stop, to prevent, to educate yourself too. Okay. Um, one of the things that I've t taken out of Rice is more than just a student experience or a professional experience. Everything that I use in my daily life pretty much is stemmed from Rice. Um, and it's powerful to see that from its fruition to now. And by all means, I'm not there yet. I am a continuing maturing person that is still growing, that still makes mistakes, and still learning from them and growing up. And I'll still make mistakes tomorrow, the next day, and so on and so forth. And that's what prevents some of us as students is that fear, that we have to be perfect, that we have to make change now. It is a process. But I don't want you to think of change as it's only up to me, okay? I just want you to picture this. If I were to influence this gentleman, this gentleman influences three others, those three influence five others, and so on and so forth, that's how we're gonna make change, all right? And the biggest compliment that I could ever have is if Andrew here, <laughs> Andrew here makes a huge difference in the world and says, you know, this is, the, this is what I've learned. This is the change I'm making. And the, biz, the biggest compliment I could ever receive is someone asked Andrew, where did you learn that? Who taught you that? And he says, Danny did. That's the biggest compliment I could ever receive. It's because he's instilled something in someone else and is making change happen for somebody. You don't need to change millions of people. You just need to change one, and that life matters just as much as anybody else's. And you will continue that trend for so on and so forth. Beyond you just being a Grand Valley student, and for other students who are here in attendance. So think of that as well. Okay. Um, with that, I hope you have a fabulous afternoon. I hope you engage yourself, you learn, and you take what you can and implement it. Um, not only on campus grounds, but in your local community, in whatever community you come from, and make sure that you know that this is where it started. Okay. With that, I thank you, and if there are any other questions, I could answer them for you real quick. So.